So um, analog summing is, functions this way. If you're working in your DAW, uh, most likely you're going to bring up your bass drum, sending out output 1, 2, snare drum, output 1, 2, overhead output 1, 2, bass output 1, 2, and everything else in your mix is going to go out output 1, 2, right? So what's going on is you're, le yelling, you're letting your computer take care of the summing of the tracks. Fair? You all with me? Summing is you take 120 tracks of garbage, and in exchange you get two tracks of garbage, right? It's, it's a trash compactor. That's what it is, all right? So 120 tracks into two tracks, so you can feed it to, uh, straight to casa, all right? So now, the way it functions in the analog summing is very different. Is, for example, if you look on my session here, which is a kind of hip hop y kind of track, uh, my bass drum goes to output 1, 2. So far, so good. Uh, and then my snare drum goes to output 3, 4. And then my bass goes to, uh, well, my electronic other percussions go to 5, 6. My bass goes to 7, 8. Guitars go to 7, 8. Vocals go to 9, 10. So I'm basically separating groups of uh, elements of my mix, two separate outputs of my converter. So you see I have 32 channels of links. In this particular case, in this mix, I use 16 channels, okay? So instead of sending everything out to two converters to monitor, I'm sending separate stems, as they say in uh, film mixing, to 16 converters. And I feed the 16 outputs to the 16 inputs of my two bus. And the two bus does the trash compacting. Am I making sense? So in instead of making, letting the computer take care of the number crunching, we don't crunch numbers. We let the electronics, the actual copper inside here, take care of the summing of all the tracks. Then I take that pair, that finished mix, and I bring it back through a bunch of outboard right here, which I hybridly use either for mixing or for mastering, which is kind of neat, and feed it back into the computer and print it in. So I'm using the old paradigm, basically I'm using the whole two inch console, half inch, right? The way it used to be. I'm doing the whole thing except the two inch is Pro Tools, the console is the two bus, and the half inch is Pro Tools again. All right, so I'm doing a round trip. Making sense to you guys? If you, if you have a picture in your head of how it goes, it's converters, two bus, processing, uh, the Neumann, the Bax, okay? And then converter back into Pro Tools, and then out of Pro Tools into the monitor section. And the monitor section lets me monitor, hence the name, uh, anything digital, like the output of my Pro, Pro Tools rig, the output of my Mac, so I can play iTunes through badass converters, which is awesome. You should try that. It's in a quiet taste, but then you hooked. Um, yes, MP3s do sound that bad. Um, and then I also can uh, monitor my iPod, also quality converters. Uh, and then I can monitor the output of uh, the two bus or the output of the master. So I can listen to anything in the studio through the same box with the same volume knob. Why is that valid? Say you're comparing your mix to uh, a CD. You pop the CD in iTunes, you press play. Now you're hearing the level, just how crushed that CD is, right? And now you're listening to your mix in Pro Tools. You're listening through the same converters. So when you AB between the iTunes and Pro Tools, you're actually hearing the same converters, the same alignment, the same levels. So you know if you're actually matching it or if you're being a pussy. So that's the thing, you really have all, always at all times a clear view of where you are level-wise and tone-wise because no matter what you do, you're listening to the same one same box at all time. The monitor section is key to the sound of the studio and most people spend 30 grand, they'll, they'll spend $4,000 on a mic free that they're going to use once a week and then they'll buy a big knob. Tragic, really gen genuinely tragic. Because everything you do, every decision you make, every judgment call you make, is based on the sound of this box. So you, you, start, you start your studio by this box, and you build the rest around it. I spent $4,000 on the quality monitor section from Dangerous, and then I'll spend 30 bucks on a mic pre, and I'll make better records. Because I'll be able to tell just how shitty that mic pre is. Whereas if I pay 300 bucks on a monitor section and $4,000 uh, on the microphone, I won't be able to know where to put the microphone because the monitor section is lying to me at all times. So it's very important to uh, balance your view of how you build your stuff. There's only so much room for everything, right? You get 100% pie of energy and you got to distribute the pie across all the tracks. So if your bass room takes 65% of the pie and you have 60 tracks of vocal, 
you're starting to paint yourself into a corner, right? So it's it's a it's an interesting game of that's why all these tracks that music tends to be grossly overcompressed because people who mix this stuff they tend to get 128 tracks and they're like, okay, the bass drum's got to take 70 percent of the energy. How am I going to deal with the rest? Since they don't they're not allowed to mute anything, they crush the shit out of it and that's how they get away with it.